Alright, so with Coromon releasing tomorrow on Steam, I figured it's about time I give you guys some tips and tricks that I think you'll appreciate. That said, if you do enjoy the video after watching, make sure to subscribe for tons of upcoming Coromon guides and breakdowns, and to discover more games like Coromon. Anyways, that said, let's get you prepared for your adventure through the Vuela region with 10 tips and tricks that you definitely should know. Number one, your Nuzlocke Coromon don't die. Okay, so as you may be aware, Coromon can be played on various difficulty settings, most notably for this point, hard and insane modes where your Coromon will leave you and return to the wild if knocked out. These settings emulate the typical Nuzlocke rule sets, which dictate that any monster that is knocked out in battle will die. Now, despite this being the case, you can actually retrieve any Coromon that is quote unquote killed during a hard or insane mode run. The only catch to this is that if you do so, your run is basically over. All you have to do is go back to the train station where you set your difficulty and set it to easy or normal, and then bam, all your Coromon will return to your PC, though you will not be able to play on hard or insane anymore. You won't lose any progress, but you will lose the Nuzlocke rule sets. This is definitely something to think about doing after completing a run, especially if you lost some potent and or perfect Coromon along the way. Number two, unlocking true custom mode. Coming off the last point, let's talk a little bit about custom difficulty options and randomization. So like I said, the game can be played in one of four preset difficulty options being easy, normal, hard, and insane, but you do have some custom options as well. You will notice that the first time you boot up the game and select your difficulty, the randomization tab will be locked. This is because in order to unlock it, you'll have to defeat the first of six Titan bosses being Voltgar. One once this is done, the options become available for you through subsequent playthroughs. This allows you to pretty much randomize anything you can think of. Back when the custom modes were first introduced in the demo, we did do a stream, so if you want to understand some of these options, you can definitely check out that stream or check out this difficulty video that I uploaded a while back. Number three, potential. All right, so in a nutshell, all Coromon have an inherent value which dictates how good they are and which form you'll find. Think of it like IVs from Pokemon, but instead of each stat having a value, there's just one value for the whole Coromon. A Coromon's value can range from 1 to 21, with Coromon whose potential is 16 or below will appear as a standard form, those to 20 will be considered potent and have a different color scheme as a result, and then there's those with 21 that will have a third color scheme and be considered perfect. This is basically a shiny system with the shiny variants being directly tied to the stats. You have a 1 in 35 chance of finding a potent, so don't be afraid to hunt them early on. You'll likely come across a lot throughout your playthrough, and you have roughly a 1 in 3,000 chance to find a perfect. If you want to learn more about how to reduce these odds, check out this video linked below. Number 4, Shiny Starters. So right at the beginning of the game, you're given the choice of one of three starters whom will be shown to you directly in the overworld. These can be potent and or perfect hunted, so all you have to do is soft reset right before you interact with the professor, and they'll appear as these new forms in the overworld. There is no need to interact with them individually, so I do highly recommend at least hunting for a potent since the odds are quite decent and shouldn't take you very long. Number five, extra Coromon data. Okay, so during a battle, you can actually see additional information about a Coromon by either using your mouse to click on its HP bar or by toggling up with the controller and selecting on that accordingly. This will let you know if you've caught this specific version of the Coromon, so if it's a potent and you own a potent form, or if it's a standard and you own a standard form, etc. This will also show you any stat changes, their current stamina balance, and more. This is really useful for completing your database and just knowing what your enemy could possibly do based on their current stamina amount. I can see this being really useful in PvP. Number six, Wild Coromon Checklist. So when you open up the Vuela region map, you can actually see which Coromon exist on which routes and towns by clicking on one of these points. If you've encountered a Coromon, whether it be in the wild or against a trainer, it will appear on the list. Those you've never seen will stay blacked out until encountered. So this is a great way to know if you've at least seen every Coromon in a specific area and subsequently whether you've caught them. Number seven, Additional Game Settings. 
So we obviously have the custom settings available, but did you know that there are actually more settings that you can access from the home page? These include showing off stylized spinners. So if you catch a Coromon in a dream spinner or a gold spinner or whatever, you can show them off, but it also has options like changing the game from the default set option to a shift option, allowing you to be notified with which Coromon your foe will be sending out. You can also have it so that you can pick your Coromon before any battle and stuff like that. Don't sleep on these settings. There's actually quite a few and they're definitely worth looking over. Number eight, increasing potential. Okay, so remember how I said Coromon potential is basically like their inherent value? Well, there is a way to increase this value via a certain NPC present within the game. So if you go to the trainer hub on Donor Island, you'll run into this guy on the upstairs floor who will charge you money to increase your Coromon's potential once. This will bring the Coromon's potential up by one point if the Coromon's potential is 19 or less. If it's 20, you have a 1 in 25 chance of increasing it to 21, at which point it will become perfect and change form. There is also a chance for more than one point to be increased, and if you have a Coromon with a 19 potential, that chance is even higher. So you'll definitely want to hold on to any Coromon with 19 and 20 potential if you're trying to perfect hunt. You do have to save before you give the guy your Coromon, as the potential growth is calculated at that point, and you do have to take a thousand steps. So it's not the craziest method, but but if you have anything with 20, it's definitely worth doing. Number nine, evolving patter bit. Okay, so right at the beginning of the game, you are given a patter bit to go alongside the starter you choose. Patter bit, while a pretty common Coromon, is very powerful, especially when you evolve it. Now it has a special evolution requirement where you must go to this house on Donor Island and speak to this guy. He'll upgrade your patter bit into Pitterbite, but not all as well as he gave you a pirated version of the software. You'll have to head to the trainer hub where the nurse tells you that it's pirated and then go back. He'll devolve your patter bit and then charge you a thousand gold for an official evolution. Once you do this, your patter bit will be evolved permanently and everything will be good to go. You can take any patter bit to this location. Number 10, milestones. Okay, so I made a whole guide on this and maybe making an updated version to coincide with the full launch, but basically milestones are like these different challenges that you can complete and in doing such will gain milestone XP. Leveling this up will net you certain rewards based on the level itself and can include items like skill flashes, which are the game's version of TMs. It can get you helpful items like the lazy gem, which is like an experience share, the energizer, which reduces stamina cost and more. You'll complete a lot of these challenges passively as you play. So so make sure you check periodically and grab your free stuff. This is yet another way Coromon just goes above and beyond and introduces mechanics that I didn't even know I needed until playing the game. And there you go guys, those were 10 beginner tips and tricks that I think you should know going into Coromon. Like I've already said in the past, April's going to be a very Coromon heavy month because I have so many ideas for different guides, breakdowns and stuff like that. So if you're into that, definitely subscribe to the channel because I put out new monster taming videos every single day. You can also check out my Twitter, my Discord, my Patreon, all links below. Special thanks to our patrons, especially Dark Persona, Dro Ghost, Jim Hamilton, and Steel Case. And with all that, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.